America has turned red, and we're not just talking about the presidential race. Republicans have swept the mandate in the Senate as well. To remind our viewers, this has been a triple election in the United States. Voters have cast their ballot to pick the 47th president, one-third of the senators, and all lawmakers in the House of Representatives. In the U.S. Senate, Republicans have crossed the halfway mark, winning 52 out of total of 100 seats. The Democrats have 42 seats and their kitty right now in six seats are yet to be called. Moving on to the lower chamber, the race is very close for the House of Representatives. Out of the 435 seats, Republicans so far have secured 198 seats. Democrats are at 180 and 57 seats are yet to be called. Until now, it was the Democrats who controlled the Senate with the support of four independents, while Republicans had the control of House of Representatives. However, it remains to be seen which way that goes. Scenario 1 says that if Democrats win the lower chamber, this will be the first time in more than 230 years of U.S. congressional elections that both chambers of Congress will have changed majority control in the opposite direction. Scenario 2, if Republicans cross the halfway mark, then the red camp will be in control of the White House and at Capitol Hill. A completely red mandate can potentially have massive implications for American policy, especially on the sweeping changes that Trump aims to implement for immigration, border security and economic reforms. It will be easier for the declared presidential winner, that's Donald Trump, to get bills passed in the Congress. Whether that happens or not is something we'll have to wait and watch. And to get us in perspective, we are now being joined by Professor Henry A. Brady, Distinguished Professor of Political Science and Public Policy at the University of California, Berkeley. Professor, thank you so much for joining us here on this broadcast. Great to be here. You know, just moments back, uh, Associated Press called the race in Michigan and expectedly it has gone to the red camp. Donald Trump has won another battleground state that makes it five out of seven. I was just speaking to my correspondent who said at this point it's a landslide. I want to ask you, this was a race that went down to the wire. I, I have lost count of the times I've said that it's a neck and neck race. But from a neck and neck race, we go to a landslide. How did this happen? Well, I wouldn't call it exactly a landslide, although it maybe is a landslide by current definition, given how hard it is to have a true landslide like Ronald Reagan had, for example, in 1980. Uh, but it is certainly a surprise, and it's much more uh, of a Republican win than anybody expected, especially since it looks like they'll probably eventually take the House as well as the Senate and have what we call undivided uh, control of government, which will give them the power to do a lot of things uh, that they otherwise couldn't have done. And that's going to make a big difference in America and probably in the world. And it's going to be a tumultuous, difficult period uh, in America and in the world. Uh, you know, Donald Trump used a term that caught my eye during his victory speech. He called his win historic realignment. And what he was referring to is that uh, blacks, Asians, Hispanics, all of them have, in a way, come through for Donald Trump this time, especially the men voters. What do you make of that? Well, what's really been going on for a while now is there's been a realignment in the sense that the Republican Party, uh, which traditionally was the party of the upper class and the rich, has increasingly become the party of the working class as well, while the Democrats that used to be the party of the working class have lost working class voters. And now that's seeped into not just white voters, but also Hispanic and black voters of the working class. And that's a surprise to Democrats, um, but it also means that uh, Trump is probably right. This is a historic shift if it continues. Also, I know a lot of postmortem of this election result is needed and we will continue to do it, but I want to put you on the spot and ask you, at what point do you think Kamala Harris lost this election? I think she probably was disadvantaged from the very beginning. The uh, Democratic Party made a mistake uh, in allowing Biden to go forward in January, and his advisors should have advised him to drop out of the race so that there could have been a primary season, which would have chosen the best possible Democratic candidate and also given a chance for that candidate to be exposed to Americans. So when Kamala Harris finally got into the race after the disastrous debate performance of Joe Biden, she didn't have much time to introduce herself to Americans or to actually run a campaign. So 
I think the answer is almost from the beginning she was handicapped. Also, before I let you go, Donald Trump has promised a quote-unquote golden era in the United States. What do you think he has in mind? I, I think it's going to be difficult to have a golden era given the policies he's proposing. Uh, certainly, there's no question but that he and actually many of his followers agree that the changes they want to make are going to cause pain to begin with. That's certainly going to be true with respect to tariffs. That's going to be true with respect to deporting people who are already here but are undocumented to other countries. And it's going to be true with respect to a lot of other policies. So that in the short run, at least, he's promised pain. And my suspicion is we'll get pain. And it's not even clear that after the pain, his policies will be successful. After all, The Economist recently called the current American economy under Biden the envy of the world. So it's hard to know how Donald Trump's going to do better than what Joe Biden did. Professor, just one last question. I apologize. Do you think in this election America was ready for a female president? I think it continues to be the case that there's a lot of misogyny uh, out there, and this election certainly showed that. Uh, it came in from the Trump camp and more generally. And a lot of uh, problems for a female uh, candidate for president. And we saw that again. And that's disappointing. All right, Professor Brady, thank you so much for joining us here on Vyond. Good to speak to you. Thank you. For all the latest news, download the Vyond app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.